What use is the graph view in Obsidian? So in today's video number four on Obsidian, that's what we're going to dive in on. Again, if you have not yet seen the past videos, one, two, three, go through them as we talk about how to use them and how to also organize your notes, improve your personalized learning system or PLS. And then we talked about plugins to enhance, to add on your existing uh, vault in Obsidian and how you're taking notes. In the graph view, this links to something that we talk about in the deep learner course that we're not just collecting the dots, but we're learning to connect the dots to link with other notes that we have created. And this is where, in my view, Obsidian really shines. What it did for me as I began to use Obsidian is that it not only changed the way I took notes, but it also shaped the way I think. When I'm taking notes from a particular input or a therapy learning from my work in the clinical practice, I am no longer just thinking about this particular learning. I'm also thinking about how this learning links with my prior knowledge. The connections to our prior knowledge and beyond is a really important feature. It's sort of like building up Lego blocks brick by brick on how one snaps into another. The graph view shaped me in this way. So there are two primary ways that we could use graph view to help us. So the first is the macro graph view and the second is looking at the local graph view or more specific. So let's look at the first one where we are zooming out. And all you have to do is click on this button that you see at the site that says open graph view and get ready for this because once you open, if you have been taking notes for a long time, it will be a wide array. But if you have not, if you've only begun, this will look small and that's okay. It would grow. In fact, I see this even as a motivating feature to have this pleasing view to see it grow. I've had people uh, who are in the mental health profession who are now beginning to use this email me to tell me how gratifying it is to see their notes grow that way. So let's click on mine. Now, mind you, even though I've been using Obsidian only for about uh, less than a year, a lot of notes came from my uh, export from Simple Notes. So that's why my note um, is going to look um, quite uh, big in, in its network. So there you have it uh, as it's playing out. My system is a bit taxed right now as I'm recording this video. This is a little bit slower. You see the notes are, are linked and connected that way. Now you might ask what use is this? In fact, there, there is really isn't much use in this other than feeling the gratification of seeing how your notes are linked. You can even play back a time lapse animation, which I have linked to a video uh, in the series about the use of Obsidian and how it looks. But where it starts to become useful is when you click on this graph setting view, uh, you can start to play with it a little bit more. So first up, let's start right from the top on the filter. So you can actually start to filter your notes by titles or by tags. Now remember how we talked about tags in the first video. Tags are a little bit like uh, folders, except that for folders, you can only have one note existing in a folder, whereas tags, you can have one note existing with multiple tags, sort of links, uh, relative links as opposed to an immediate family link. So the use of tags is wonderful because one note can have multiple tags. And that's what I've been using it for even in my simple note use days of that app. So let's just say um, if I want to zoom in on a particular tag, um, let's say I want to zoom in on the note that I've been taking, I'll type it out on non-violence, on the topic on non-violent communication. So I call this non violence and then click enter so there you have it it will start to populate itself so the note shrinks dramatically because the inputs of the tag non-violence are lesser and then 
Once you have that, you could even see notes that are tags, right? So tags, uh, in this case, like nonviolent, that's a tag, and I've, it's been colored blue, but there are other tags that are related as well. You could zoom in. So on vulnerabilities, on aphorisms that I'm capturing on spirituality, and that links to some notes by uh, Rabbi Jonathan Sachs, who unfortunately passed away recently, and so on. You can see the links. And if you want to see the direction of the links, you can also turn on the arrows. You can see a little arrows that it's pointing to. You could narrow that to attachments to add, existing files only. Often notes just means notes that are not linked. I've turned that on. For this particular tag, uh, most of my notes are linked already. I don't see any that are not linked. All right. So if, if not linked, you can turn that on and you can um, zoom that in that way. Uh, with your mouse, you can zoom in by sliding in or sliding out. And then text fade, you can play around with that setting. And not, not size, if you want to increase that or decrease that, play around with that. Line thickness, I kind of like how it is currently not too thick. You could animate that, you could play that back just for the sake of seeing how the notes are being created. So you could see in real time uh, how notes get linked. Pretty cool, isn't it? Uh, just to kind of see those links. Now, this is really useful if you're trying to think back about your notes in a particular category. So in this case, non-violence communication and non-violent communication. And you could uh, see the creation of those notes that way. Central force, if you want your notes to be pulled in a little bit more, you could do that. You can group them this way. Or if you want to diffuse them a little bit more, you can pull them out. Repel force, the opposite link force and link distance. So I won't go so much into that. You could play around with those settings. So you could extend your filtering a little bit further by saying if this relates to another tag, say I have tags about the topic on forgiveness, right? And it will narrow down for you that way. And it will zoom in on notes that has, so in this case, it seems to be uh, one particular note that has this. And you can see the color coding are different for tags. All right, so that's how you could play around with a macro view. And again, this really starts to become super helpful when you've amassed quite a lot of notes along the way as you build this garden of knowledge and learning as you go. But what about when it gets to specific notes? How can you use them? So I've been writing this particular blog called um, Explain Your Ideas to an Expert and all the way down to a child, which is inspired by a Wyatt uh, video series, Wyatt Magazine video series that talks about this. So I, I'm going to use this as an example on how the local graph view is useful. You click on the note right at the bottom, the three dots, and you go to open local graph view. And this is the, for this particular note, you would have this graph view, right? So not much is going on other than the primary note is linked to three other notes. So I'm using this for the Frontiers Friday newsletter number 75. That one is going to come out uh, and that's why it's linked. Um, it's linked to a particular video about a neuroscientist explaining an idea from the Y Magazine video series I explained. So not much is happening. So the filter is again really useful here. Uh, you could filter by files further if you want, but in the local graph view, not much that I would do with that. So I want to see um, how this links with other subtopics or sub tags that, that I use. So you could click on tags and here you go. It's open further tags like writings. Uh, it's, this topic seems to be linked to uh, learning. That's another tag. All right, and then I want to expand now. This is where you go to depth and you slide on this slider to go up and you see immediately it starts to expand primarily because in my writing, my, my weekly synth notes, uh, synthesizing notes, where every week I go into my inbox and I look at all the notes that I want to metabolize and process 
it's sort of that's why it's expanding so much bigger that way we talked about the use of the inbox in how to organize how to organize your notes and video too so that's why that's a lot bigger that way and if you slide even further you see it expand even more so it gets to a point where it might be overwhelming if you have a lot more notes but let's just say if i stick to here at um what level am i now probably level two you could see it's linked to other things here and i can start to explore that if i'm thinking about this neighbor links basically just gives you links to other neighboring nodes right it starts to join it for you in this way now if the color coding is not helpful for you you can even look at the grouping section and start to change that so um let's just say for this particular note i want to have um, a grouping of tags with um i don't know if it, is it linked to any e-readings or spirituality tags and it will come up this particular color you can even change the color if you want to and click on a new group there you have it these notes starts to appear into um, particular notes here whoops no that's not red is that red no uh let's see what are the reddish color one the cave of the heart right so that one's linked to spirituality and you could play around with that even more and here uh, like the macro graph views you could even change its displays if you want to have arrows the forces of the repel central force you can even play with that so this is really powerful when you start to explore ideas that you want to develop even further right down from the macro graph view to the local graph view but remember this only works very well when you create bi-directional links when you start to link your notes with other notes as we talked about in video two of the obsidian series where you create little square brackets and you type in within the notes of how this links with previous notes you have created so this is the graph view play around with it tell me what you think how you are using it if you have any ideas around using the graph view to enhance your learning or even maybe even using the graph view for testing yourself about what you have created in those notes thanks for sticking around with the obsidian series if there are any other stuff that you like for me to cover about the use of obsidian to improve your learning uh, let us know in the comments below and remember to click subscribe if this channel weeds your appetite mm -hmm.